Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Building in Subtext. This week, I want to talk about potential, resistance, current, and power, which is a bit of a change. It used to be potential, resistance, current, and outcome. Going through the different signposts and adding these modalities of scene structure to the actual signpost story beats made me realize that we need to go back to the original terminology from Dramatica Theory 1.0. So here I've copied over the definitions from the original Dramatica Theory book, potential resistance current, and instead of outcome now, it's power. Potential simply means a latent tendency towards some attitude or action. Resistance simply means a tendency towards inertia. Current simply means the flow of a process. And power simply means the effect of a process. And what's interesting is in the past, and for most of the quads that you'll find, in subtext, the order of the story beats will be potential, resistance, current, and outcome, which makes you think that it begins with a potential, because that sounds like, oh, there's some potential for conflict, and then some resistance comes along, and then that resistance matched up with the potential creates some current, and then that results in an outcome. So when it was outcome, it was even more of a sequential sort of thing. And that's not what it is at all. It's more about the relationship between these items, not the idea that potential comes first and then resistance and then current and then power. What I did was create two examples, one from the Shawshank Redemption and Red's main character through line. And the other one is from Star Wars and the objective story through line because both are out of the default order so that you can see what that is actually like. So if I come in here into subtext and look at Red's main character through line, you can see the four signposts which tell his arc from beginning to end. And in the beginning, he is in being, and the modality attached to being is resistance. So you can see we're starting in the second one here, even though it comes first. Then he goes to becoming, and the second one of that is current. What we're doing is we're going resistance to current, and that comes second. And then the third one you can see here is power. All we've done is start with resistance, then go to current, then go to power, and that's conceding there. And then the last bit of his arc is in conceptualizing, and we come back to the potential. It's not really that we came back, it's just that the potential came last in the sequence of this particular narrative. And the illustrations of this, so you can see what it's like to compare these different modalities of scene structure with one another, the spatial modalities, Red, in the very beginning, the first act, Red sneaks in contraband for inmates while telling the review board he's a changed man. Clearly, he's not. He feigns reconciliation while continuing to play the role of a minor criminal. So that's the resistance, the tendency towards inertia. He's just going to keep doing these things and keep being this way because that's where his head is. He's just, this is just what I do. And that inertia, that tendency towards just continuing to do that, is what's happening in the first signpost. Then you come into the second signpost, and this one is the current, which is the flow of the process. And this is after he meets Andy. And the illustration of that is Red's mentality is one of flowing with the changes without any real direction or purpose. Change comes, but without a true transformation, it looks like he's simply taking advantage of a convenient situation. So he is changing, that's the becoming, but without any real direction, it's not going to end up anywhere. It's not going to be a complete change. It's just going to continue to flow that way. So he's going with the flow of things just because that's what's happening here. Then in the middle, after Andy plays the thing over the speakers and he ends up in solitaire, Red ends up in conceiving where the power, the effect of all this that he's going through comes to light. And it plays out with his interactions with the new arrival, the young kid. Red takes a stand with the new arrival when it comes to helping Andy. Red knows the effect institutionalized thinking has on a man and counsels the boy against getting the wrong idea, which is clearly just a projection of his own problems or his own issues onto this kid and starts to get the idea that maybe there's a different way that power of going through this, the effect of all this rethinking things and transforming is now coming to light and leads him back to the potential that was always latent there, that was always within him from the very beginning. Red has always had a latent tendency towards rebelling. Whether as a young man or trapped for decades in Shawshank, Red was always on the run from the law, a fugitive from oppressive thinking. So that 
potential was always there, but it doesn't come to light until the very end. Breaking parole and escaping the country is just a matter of Red figuring out that place in the world that he always had, and that's where we end up. So that's what it feels like to shift things around so that you're actually starting with the resistance that's been built up and with the inertia that he's already got going on that comes because of this potential, but it doesn't really enter consideration until you go through the entire story. And then here in Star Wars and the objective story through line, we have the Star Wars between the good guys and the bad guys. In the same way that Red went through four different signposts, the objective story is going to go through four different signposts as well. The first one here is doing, and that's going to show up as the resistance. Then we're going to get to learning, which will actually be the potential. Then in the third, we're going to go through obtaining, which again is the current, which is in that third spot. And then the last one is going to be understanding, which will be the ultimate power, the effect of all that process, which is where you likely expect it. Coming into the illustrations, in the beginning of doing the resistance part, the Empire illegally boards a diplomatic ship. The diplomatic ship is smuggling stolen plans to aid a rebellion. They're both doing illegal things, and that resistance, that inertia towards fighting to continuing to fight against one another is what gets them caught up in the inertia of war. Then after Luke's aunt and uncle are killed, and then he ends up going with Ben Kenobi to the Death Star, the princess and the antagonist get into a battle of beliefs. The princess refuses to break during her interrogations, while the antagonist refuses to back down from his belief that she will. Their interactions reveal the latent and contradictory belief systems, systems between those who rebel and those who enforce. So this act of trying to learn, of interrogating her and getting information out of her and her letting him know that this is not going to happen, that is based on these belief systems of right and wrong that is creating the potential for all the fighting. That comes after the resistance, which is, okay, we're going through this, and then, okay, where did the potential for this come from? Oh, it's here, which then leads into the current of obtaining, and this is the whole sequence that third section where they are going to rescue her and they get her out of the Death Star. This flow of warring against one another eventually makes its way into the rebel group. Their differing mentalities encouraging infighting as they rescue the princess. So now the fighting that was between good and bad is now between good and good. And even once they rescue her, her mentality only makes things worse to where they almost get captured but eventually escape. You can see how we start with the resistance of this fight which is essentially what the objective story of Star Wars is about. It's the warring. And then the potential of it comes to light, where all that came from. That's the learning aspect of it. And then we get into the obtaining part of it, which is the current. That's the flow of the process of going through this dramatic circuit, which is all their fighting over the different ways of thinking as to how they should best escape which almost gets them caught. And then eventually we get to the last signpost, which is the Empire's battle station moves into position to destroy the rebel base. The effect of all the fighting between the good and the bad is that now it's it's showtime. So this is it, this is the end of it. The rebels find themselves coming out on top when the effect of all their infighting then leads to a greater appreciation of how best to win the fight. The same way that you had read with all the current stuff, which again is the flow of the process, this doesn't go anywhere until you get to the effect of that, so that you actually have that change, that there's an effect for it, there's a power to it. All that fighting is eventually what leads both Luke and Han to better understand how they should appreciate when it comes to fighting. And also the other understanding is the misunderstanding from the antagonist that, what, we're going to give up? And once they find out, oh, hey, by the way, I think we've, they've got a way to get rid of us, no, am I going to give up in my moment of triumph? The effect of all that fighting has brought him to a place where he understands nothing's going to happen to me, and of course, that's not how it works out. That should help explain what it feels like when you have potential resistance and current and power out of order. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, I have this article here that I've written called Writing Perfect Scene Structure with Dramatica, and it goes through and talks about potential resistance, current, and outcome, as well as the other modalities. I'll do other videos describing what's it like when things are out of sequence. But this should be a good start so that when you come into your own story here into subtext, 
and you come and you look at your signposts, you can see what it's like to write these signposts when their modalities are out of the typical default order that you would expect. If you have any questions about anything, please let me know and I'll see you next time.